As you can see here, we have a little problem. In fact, all the problems we've had the last couple of days are little. You might say they're microscopic. <laughs> yeah, if you get my drift. Anyway, I guess maybe you might say it's a big problem with a little part. In other words, the tongue on that seat won't fit through the hole. Now I'm just sort of wondering here, would it be possible to use my 12,000 size bit and drill it out? Um, I'll try one and see how it goes, and if it works, then we'll do the other three. I just got to thinking here, it wouldn't be the first time that I misread the plans, and maybe those tongues aren't supposed to go in those holes, so I brought up the plan. Sure enough, it's very clear. Can't get any clearer. Well, yeah, it probably could be clear, but it's clear enough. I think it was about two or three episodes ago that I had concluded that it was easier, at least for me, to bring the small part to the drill than the drill to the small part. Well... realized that I had said we'll just do one and try it and then I went and drilled out two. It's the first time actually. Yeah. So there seems to be a little bit of a, a bulge on the tongue there and it just goes down and it automatically stops there. I think if I bend the chair into shape and then poke it in and put a little dab of CA glue on there, well, that should work just fine. Now, I did the other platform the same way, but you can see here that the uh, bit, if it was any larger, it would have tore out the side. Those holes were already very close to the edge. Now if I'm smart here, I'll take this bit out of here and I'll put it back in a special little box before I accidentally break it off. I was just listening to myself there in yesterday's episode, and it sort of sounds like sometimes I'm complaining, like uh, th saying things like, uh, be glad when I'm through with these piddly little parts or something like that. I'm actually enjoying the challenge. I think that the reason I'm sounding a little bit disgusted is not because I'm not enjoying it. I'm just sort of disappointed in myself as, you know, doing such a poor job here. But that's the way it goes. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually enjoying this. Now, I know we started this series away back in, what was it, January the 23rd? And uh, we went through for 100 episodes and stopped for uh, a break there. We started uh, the clock series back on May the 3rd. And uh, that thing went on until about the 5th of June. Now we're back at the uh, ship series again, and we today we're at uh, episode 120. And um, yeah, episode 200 isn't going to be until September the 15th. Now, I imagine we're probably going to have an episode every day. Uh, however, in the very near future, I am expecting somebody to come over and help me do something on the house. And maybe that day it might not be a good idea to be sitting at my model table while somebody else is working. So uh, we might be taking a break that day. Otherwise, uh, um, all being well, uh, well, in the middle of September, we'll take another break. And I'm planning on turning a pen or two. Uh, but that's the plan. And things change. While I'm attempting to use this microscope for the very first time to bend photo etch parts, and I don't yet know how it's going to go, uh, yeah, it might be a good time to sort of mention how these YouTube videos are uh, produced. And the way I work at it, I might start as early as, oh, 8 o'clock in the morning, some t once or twice a little earlier, and I'll usually quit around mid-afternoon. Then I start uploading the final edit to YouTube. Usually it takes uh, YouTube, oh, uh, Oh, up to two hours before it actually gets itself produced into what is 4K. 
Uh, it starts out at 360p, uh, which is uh, actually just slightly better than the way Laguna used to advertise their Resaw King blades. Uh, <laughs> that's another story. However, uh, usually around 5 in the afternoon Winnipeg time, it's ready to uh, open up to the public. In other words, as they say, release the trolls. Hey, I'm just kidding. Anyway, um, yeah, so uh, uh, then, while it's uploading in the afternoon, I'll come back here and I will start at the next day's episode. So when you are watching an episode, in other words, this episode 120, uh, I actually went back to the model table here and started episode 120 yesterday afternoon. Um, that's why maybe some things uh, I don't say are quite make sense. If I'll be talking about yesterday, such and such happened, and you'll think to yourself, well, that actually happened the day before yesterday. Anyway, I thought I'd just sort of mention that. Well, using this, uh, I'm seeing it incredibly larger and incredibly sharper than uh, using even even these. Uh, however, my perspective is, is gone. It's, uh, uh, there's no peripheral vision to sort of see anything out of the corner of your eye sort of thing. And it's, uh, uh, yes, it's good. I think if it was something a lot smaller, then this would be an, ab an absolute necessity. Uh, but uh, for just bending these little parts, I think probably this is the best way to go. Now let's not lose it. Now, Ron, who do you think you're kidding here? If the parts were much smaller. If the parts were much smaller, they'd be staying on the sprue. Okay, this actually works a lot better. So don't go running out and buying yourself a microscope and think it's going to help you with your photo etch. All right. There's our first little uh, seat. Let's see if it'll drop into that hole and look like anything like it's supposed to. Okay, that's one more or less in the right place. Now just five more to go. The seats are on, and you'll notice I've got them sort of angled in, so that if the gunner was sitting on it, he'd be sort of facing in in this direction. This gunner would face in this way, this gunner would face in this way. But if you notice, according to the instructions, that's the way they're supposed to go. They kind of, they're at a bit of an angle, at least that's the way it appears, especially this one here. If it goes straight down and drops in. It's facing in. Um, I'll put on the macro lens and you get a different pr perspective. Okay, you're going to notice a couple of things. First of all, that there's a lot of CA glue on there and that, well, I'm thinking though that that CA glue, once it's covered with a flat paint, you know, you're not going to see it. It might even look like, uh, oh, maybe little cushions on the seats. The second thing you're probably going to notice is that I'm going to accidentally knock these over while I'm trying to turn them around. I'll do my best here. And we'll try and keep them in your field of vision. Okay, that's that one. And that's that one. Now I know you can't see the clock on the wall. But it's just after 2 o'clock here in Winnipeg right now. So I'm going to close this uh, episode off and get it uploading. And hopefully it'll be ready by, by 5 o'clock my time. It usually is. And uh, yeah, all being well, we're going to see you tomorrow. That is if I can stop poking at these. <laughs>